uh, Honorable Godfrey Dami, it surprises me so much. Because he went to articulate the law before the justices and they have held it. But you see, let me put this in perspective. First of all, we have problems even with the decision itself. And we, we will soon be applying to the court for review of his own decision. You see, when the, the process decision for the interim measures in favor yes. of uh, William. Okay. When the processes were filed, we filed our affidavit in opposition and statement of case. And some say it was not an ex parte application before the African Court on Human and People's Rights. It was on notice to us. It was not ex parte. So when we filed our submissions, we were expecting that they would have sent us a mail to fix a date for us to go and argue our case. Nothing of the sort happened. Then the eve of the decision of the Supreme Court, we got an email from them indicating that a decision had been taken. And if you look at the proceedings of the day, Wyoming was represented, we were not. How did they get to know that the case was to be heard on that date when we were not sent any notice by the court to that effect? That's one. Secondly, when we are writing a critique of what is happening, we should look at it within the perspective of the decision that was taken. And we should read carefully the points that were made to persuade the justices to do what they did. Now, if you read Article 129, 129, 1 and 2, it's very clear that the Supreme Court of Ghana is the final court of appeal. They, they don't share that with any other court. That is without equivocation. Now, the argument that was put before the court was this. That, look, for example, if you look at the African Development Bank Immunities and Privileges Act of 1967, <coughs> it was contingent on the ratification of the 1964 treaty. Now, if you look at that, then what we're saying was that after Parliament had ratified or given the, 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 the go-ahead for us to have this particular thing as part of it, we needed to move a step further. Okay, to incorporate it into municipal law. And incorporate it into municipal law by the enactment of an act that will absorb that. Because we are a dualist uh, state, as, as you are aware. What does and that so, mean, a dualist state as against a monist state? What does that mean? Well, I, I don't know whether uh, we will have to go into a lecture as to because monism. Because you have mentioned it, it's good to educate. First of all, oh. first, first of all let, me, let, me, let me expatiate my point. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll don't worry, it will take care of that. Very well. <laughs> you see, as I indicated, if you look at it from that perspective, there was no tacit um, enactment of a, an act to give effect to that. There's no doubt about that. And of course, looking at uh, the provisions of 1291 and 1292,